Good afternoon and welcome. 
to Lordstown Motors. My name is Ian Upton, and I joined Lordstown Motors in February of 2020. I'm sure you remember last spring, the start of the global pandemic. In the midst of all of that chaos, I was changing companies, buying and selling a house, and relocating my family from Michigan to Ohio, and I have never once looked back. Prior to joining Lordstown Motors, I was with General Motors for 22 years. I've worked in nine different facilities, four different states, and three different countries as I moved into roles of increasing responsibility. At Lordstown Motors, I am the Director of Production Control, and I've had the fantastic opportunity of being part of this plant's transformation from building a traditional internal combustion engine vehicle to building what will be the world's first all-electric pickup truck. I also have the privilege of being your host on today's tour, and over the next 40 or so minutes, we're going to see seven different stops. Six of those are going to highlight our manufacturing capabilities, and one is going to highlight our design engineering. Throughout the tour, we're going to focus on three main things. That is our flexibility, our capability, and the overall value of this facility. We purchased this fully functional plant from General Motors for $20 million. And as we're out on the tour, you'll see that that is an amazing value. It's this plant that's a key reason we will be able to bring this product to market for significantly less capital in a much shorter period of time than if we were building a plant from the ground up. Let's go take a look. On this tour, we will follow the general flow that one of our endurance trucks takes as it is built by real employees in a real plant. It begins here in stamping by transforming raw metal, coil, or pre-cut blanks into finished stamped components. Our first stop on the tour is a standalone Fagor tryout press where you will meet Mike Fabian, our Director of Stamping Operations. Welcome to Lordstown Stamping. I'm Mike Fabian, the Director of Stamping Operations. I have 35 years of experience in the automotive industry in stamping and I have assembled a team of engineers and die makers and production people that have over 200 years of automotive stamping and also other stamping experience around me. Our, st our stamping operations consists of four major press lines. Each major press line is capable of running 400 strokes per hour, fully automatic die changes. We have a, a transfer press that is also capable of full automatic die changes along with running 650 parts per hour. Behind me is a uh, Fagor 2250 ton tryout press. We also use this press for production. If you don't understand what 22, how heavy 2250 tons is, just imagine 450 average size elephants stacked on top of each other. And that's how much pressure this press is capable of making. The definition of stamping is actually taking a flat sheet of sheet metal these gentlemen back here are going to take a flat piece of sheet metal, put it in the press behind me, and they're going to roll it over. As you can see, when they step into the press, the press is 180 inches by 96 inches. So it's 180 wide by 96 inches deep. So if you have a Jeep Compass, I could park it in here, roll the press over, and make it a little shorter for you. They're going to roll this press over, and it's going to hold the sheet metal. It's going to stretch it over a die and it'll form it into a cab back for our endurance pickup. That's this part right back here. We're gonna make this part here in just a moment. This part is welded into the back of the cab right below the rear window on the cab of the endurance. This one on the rack behind me is actually the first part that we stamped here at Lordstown Stamping. Once we stamp it here, the part is transferred into the trimming area. It'll be trimmed and, and cut into the correct shape and then transfer it out to the body shop. When they're done with it, you'll see that they'll pull the part out. It'll come over here. You'll see it's a finished shape part. We, in, we To ensure quality in our uh, parts when we're transferring them over to the body shop, we have process controls. We use our shut height, our tonnage monitors, our nitrogen and air pressures to control the shape and the form of the part while we're making it. And that's what allows us to ensure the body shop that they get a quality panel every time. So, as you can see, we have a finished panel. And on, on this process, we can make about three a minute. And that's because it's all manually loaded and unloaded. So, 
thank you very much and thank you for visiting Stamping and have a great day. We will now go to the body shop. The body shop is the manufacturing area of the plant where we weld all the components together to create what is referred to as the body in white. Our body shop is about 1.2 million square feet and has over 900 robots that were part of our purchase from General Motors. On our next stop, you will meet George Serenatus, who is our Director of Body Shop Operations. Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the Ron Trouch Memorial Body Shop. The, the shop is named after a previous director, Ron, who unfortunately lost a battle with cancer about a month ago. Uh, but in honor of his drive and passion, his attention to detail, we've renamed the body shop after him in, in his memory. My name is George Serenatus. I'm the current director here in Body. I've got over 34 years of manufacturing experience, 33 of it right here in this facility with General Motors, and the last year and a half with Lordstown Motors. I've got over 20 years in Body Operations. I've also assembled a really great team behind me of engineers and supervisors, ride associates, interns, got a great team, over 500 years of manufacturing experience with this team. We are standing at perhaps the most critical operation in the body shop, and that's the framing station. The framing station, we bring together the body sides, the cab back, which you saw being stamped over in your previous uh, tour. Those come together and get framed and welded to the underbody. So it's where we set the foundation for the truck body. Very critical that this operation is precise and repeatable. But before we watch that run, we're going to walk down and watch our dispensing robots. There's five dispensing robots, and they will be applying sealer and structural adhesive. So the purpose for this is to prevent water and sound intrusion and also to give the body more structural integrity. All in all, there's 150 linear feet of sealer and structural adhesive on the truck body. After that, you'll see these robots pulling the body sides down from an overhead conveyor, and those will be docked in a holding fixture, and those then will be installed on the underbody that's in the, in the dispensing station. But back to LA-40. As I said, the most critical operation in the body shop. It's where we set the foundations, like your foundation for your house. It's got to be right, got to be repeatable, got to be dimensionally accurate. This is what sets the, the location of the doors, the roof, the fenders, the hood. Everything is reliant upon this station to be dimensionally sound. And you can see just to my right, a completed truck body. The fits on this body are excellent because this station was done properly. So after LA Ford, after our framing station, the body will then progress up the line and there's additional welding stations that will apply more, more welds to in, enhance that structure of the truck body being that it's the first full-size all-electric work truck, this body needs to be structurally sound. There are over 4,000 welds put on this body. Four, over 4,000 welds. So we know this body leaving this body shop is going to, be, is going to be right. After this welding area, the body will then be conveyed over to our roof install area, which we call laser braze because once the roof's installed, and you'll see in a second, we actually burn silicon bronze wire into the roof ditch. And you'll see that process, like I said, in a second. And that gives the, the body even more structural integrity and also for appearances, it's a really clean joint. So this is state-of-the-art equipment that came with the shop when we purchased it, and we're glad to have it. Once the roof's installed in laser braze, the body will then come back over to here, to this area right in front of me, where our production associates will then install the door hinges, the doors, the hood, the fenders, and all the what we call closures will be installed onto the body. So that, again, is reliant upon my, my framing station, that, that it'd be a perfect fit. And then eventually the body traverses down and gets inspected for any metal defects and all that that's taken care of. And then the body 
gets conveyed to the paint shop. And that's it, the amazing body shop here at Lordstown Motors. The property is close to a thousand acres, just over six million square feet under roof, which includes the stamping and body shop, the paint shop, which we are going to see next, and the general assembly building. All of these shops are connected by overhead trestle or conveyor systems. The next stop today is the paint shop. Because of the nature of the paint shop, which is a dust and contaminant free environment, you will not be able to directly see the paint operation. So instead, Dusty Trail, our director of paint operations, will share with you a short video that was taken last week of our endurance trucks being processed. All right, welcome to Lordstown Motors Paint Shop. My name is Dusty Trail. I'm the director of paint operations and here to tell you today a little bit about our process. Um, and we pulled together some footage from various steps of our operation, our pre-production, our retooling, uh, all our hard work. We're gonna see some examples here on the video screen. Um, this is gonna prevent us from having to dress out in a blue Smurf suit, uh, a lint reducing uh, protecting agent and go out on the paint floor and uh, far and wide where our operation is. Actually, the first two stages are in another department in the East Building. So, without further ado, we've got a five-stage paint coatings operation beginning with uh, chemical pre-treatment layer. So the multi-metal body in white, you guys just seen an example of over in the body weld shop, is loaded onto an overhead carrier and sent through a series of spray rinses and dips where the body is cleaned, degreased, and a zirconium coating, conversion coating is applied. So our next step is the e-coat layer in a 112,000 gallon paint bath that's electrified. The endurance pickup trucks are submerged and e-coated. The exterior and the interior of the vehicle uh, are coated with a rust preventative primer. So the e-coat layer is our number one protection in the whole manufacturing process for uh, rust prevention. Another corrosion protection aspect of our operation is the interior seam sealing process where you can see we're 100% automated when it comes to the interior seams. Um, this allows us to guarantee the cab of the endurance pickup truck is 100% waterproof. Uh, so the sealer is applied over the body, welded body joints. We also apply a seam sealer to the underbody of those same joints to guarantee the waterproofing effect and to the door edges and the hems. So in the manual sealing operation, Tiffany and Roger here are doing touch-ups to the robotically applied sealer beads and an inspection process to make sure we're on seam. The robots have applied the seam exactly to where we want them to on those joints. Here we can see Joe and Morgan performing a skiving process on sealer that's applied to the A-pillar in a uh, process where we're guaranteeing that we're gonna have a smooth surface to adhere the windshield to when the windshield gets installed here. This is really important for our federal vehicle safety standards. Attention to detail. In our paint operation, our manual inspection team our manual operation team have a series of inspections where we can build quality into the process before it leaves the area. So after sealing, we have our top coat application process. We use a three wet paint top coat application, including primer, uh, base coat, and clear coat. This is where our customers get the color and the shine is the first impression that they get when they see an endurance pickup truck. We've got an eight color palette, beginning with our four standard colors. You see here electric white being applied. We've also got grit gray, titanium silver, and night shift black. So the other half of our color palette is our premium colors. Forest service green, municipal yellow, uh, patrol blue metallic, and Y-Town red are colors that are geared more specifically toward our fleet customer base. This part of our operation is very sensitive, so we uh, control every aspect of the process, not just the mechanics of the robotics and the conveyor, 
uh, the material, the viscosity and consistency, the booth environment are all critical to a repeatable, sustainable process. So in a battery electric vehicle, we don't have engine noise. And that being said, we've got more road noise we have to be concerned with in terms of the customer experience of driving an electric truck. Here you can see Justin and Brian injecting beta foam into our structural cavities inside the pillars of A, B, and C in the cab. So beta foam is an expansion foam material that reduces noise vibrations, vibrations and harshness. Um, after the beta foam installation, we go through a final finesse, which is an inspection process that guarantees we're not going to ship any defects to the customer. If a defect is fine using our search and repair method, uh, we'll sand and polish the defect away before we ship it out to General Assembly. So that's a little bit about our painting process. After the paint shop provides the corrosion protection, as well as the glossy paint surface, the vehicle travels to General Assembly for the final assembly operations. At the next stop of the tour, you will see our product differentiating hub motor assembly area. This area covers 400,000 square feet and ultimately has annual capacity for 240,000 hub motors, enough to build 60,000 trucks annually. All of our manufacturing equipment has been built, it has been validated at the equipment manufacturer's location, and has been shipped. We will be starting our installation and commissioning process in the next two weeks. On the next stop, you'll meet Rajiv Lambda, our Director of Hub Motor Manufacturing. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Lordstown Motor. I am Rajiv Lamba, Director of Hub Motor. A little bit about myself. I have 25 years of experience working in the automotive industry. And before joining the Lordstown Motor, I worked for Cummins and Denso. In my previous role, I have been working and setting up the manufacturing plant across the world. So I've set up plants in India, China, Brazil, Mexico, and the United States. And I've been fortunate to live in many countries as well. So I lived in Japan, India, UK, and now I'm in US. So that was about myself. Now I'm going to talk to you and walk you through the hub motor and our manufacturing facility. This is our hub motor. The hub motor has got 110 10 kilowatt under one wheel. So think about four wheels, that makes it 440 kilowatt. If I turn that into horsepower, that's 600 horsepower. From the parts point of view, we have got 90 parts which we're using in hub motor. And since there are very few parts, that makes our supply chain management a lot easier. It has got a 1600 Newton meter torque and the weight of the hub motor is around 38 kilogram. So this was about our hub motors. Now I'm going to talk about our manufacturing facility. Our equipments are ready and is on the, is on the ocean right now. So we are going to get our equipment, our lines, by first week of July. We're going to start getting our lines by first week of July. Once the line has been set, like once the equipment is here, we'll have to go with the process of uh, site acceptance testing. We'll be validating our equipment, making sure that it's, it's like running and the process capability is good. One thing I want to make, uh, make it more clear is that this line has already been tested in Malaysia. So as a process, we'll be doing another testing over here. The plant where we're standing right now is 800,000 square feet. And that's for propulsion. The propulsion is battery and hub. And hub motor is around 400,000 square feet. All the equipments which we're getting is like, we are trying to keep as much as commonality between the hub motors and the, and the, uh, and the battery so that from the control's point of view, we have got an easier control. So our our PLCs are pretty common. We are trying to keep the same robot, and that makes it like manufacturing controls a lot easier. So that was all about our the plant. So I would like to come closer to TV. I would like to show you a video for two minutes. We're just going to talk more about our hub motors.
Thank you very much for coming over here and uh, enjoy the rest of your tour. Thank you very much. The next area of the plant that we will see is our general assembly area. In the trim shop, all of the interior components are installed. This includes the floor coverings, seats, center console, instrument panel, headliner, and all the interior trim pieces. And of course, all of the safety components such as seat belts and airbags. At our next stop, you will meet Aaron Smith, our manager of vehicle architecture, and he will walk you through some of our design parameters, as well as highlight some crash test results from our initial beta builds. Welcome everyone. I'm glad to have you here today visiting us. Um, before I start my presentation, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of our uh, employees that are helping me out with the presentation. Rachel Hart, one of our wonderful General Assembly uh, engineers, and uh, Savannah Sawyers, who's one of her interns in, uh, in General Assembly. And my, I'm Aaron Smith, I'm Manager of Vehicle Architecture in CAD Systems. Um, what interested me about coming to Lordstown is the coupling of a body-on frame with an in-wheel in motor system. Um, that, with that coupling, you're able to take all the benefits of an in-wheel motor, but with the additional isolation that comes with body and frame, counteract some of the harshness that comes with the additional uh, wheel and weight. So getting into my presentation. The first thing when you set up a vehicle is to make sure that you are competitively sized with anyone else that your customer is used to buying from. And what that translates to, firstly, is on the interior side. So on the interior side, by having a competitive dimensions, we're able to guarantee our customers uh, the comfort that they're used to. And on top of that, in our interior, when they, our customers get into uh, our, our vehicle, they have all the same touch points and operation points that they're used to in a traditional vehicle, which ensures that they can get in and right away be able to operate the vehicle in a comfortable way. But as an EV, we're able to do upgrades like the dual display that lets them know that they're in something special. On the exterior of the vehicle, those dimensions translate into cargo space. Uh, for a truck, a big part of that cargo space is the rear pickup box, but because we're an EV and our motor's out at the wheel end, our second cargo space is the front. Now, because we don't have a traditional powertrain and half shafts, and we have our in-wheel motors out underneath the wheels, we're able to drop a frunk in there. With the frunk, we get a dry space to, so that any of our customers can store out their, their uh, tools for out on the job site for, that, uh, that allow them to keep those tools safe and in a dry environment and any additional cargo that they may want. On top of having a dry, safe space for those tools, we also provide to them two outlets on the vehicle, one in the pickup box and another into the front. And that helps us take advantage of our large battery underneath when they drive out to a drop site that may not have electricity and it may not have a generator available, they can still get out there and get the job done. So one of the most complex systems in an EV is the electrical system. Because outside of a traditional low voltage electrical system, you have to account for the high voltage system. Because we have in-wheel motors, we had the additional challenge of safely getting out uh, the high voltage system to power our in-wheel motors. To, to counteract this difficulty, what we did is we came, we worked with our supplier to come up with a proprietary bus bar system. What this does, this bus bar system, allows us to safely connect with the in-wheel motor uh, from anything in the environment, but it also pushes the wires off at an angle so that when you're transitioning from steering to any tr wheel travel out at the wheel ends between jounce and rebound, we're, we're steering our wiring out in a protective environment so we can, connect, can account for all those wheel turning and moving positions. So the cornerstone of our vehicle is our skateboard. Although our skateboard is built on a very traditional SLA, because we have the additional weight and low CG from battery 
and these in-wheel motor systems, it allows us to get unprecedented handling. On top of that, our have putting the wheels, the motors out at the wheel ends allows us to safely apply the torque right at the contact patch. So we don't risk anything like that you would see in a traditional powertrain uh, like torque steer. We're, we can control that torque right there at the wheel ends so safely operate the vehicle. And maybe one of the most important parts for a business is to have a plan going forward. Our skateboard concept not only allows for LMC to quickly adapt to future uh, product plans, but it also allows us to adapt for partnerships and electrification amongst many different potential sources. Lastly, and, and arguably most importantly, safety. Safety is a critical feature for our customers, especially in the occupant space, but because we're an EV, making sure that we have a safe place to have our battery pack, that we won't risk any injuries or anything with the vehicle uh, is extremely important. So, uh, and this is something I'm very proud of at LMC. One of our early beta prototypes, we've done uh, our M FM VSS testing and we're already meeting FM VSS requirements. But on top of that, we have very great correlation with our virtual CAE. What that allows for is that LMC, as we go to later builds, we're able to optimize the weight and the structures to get additional weight savings, along with ensuring that we will meet all our five-star targets. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, for all your interest, and uh, it's very good to see all of you here today. As was mentioned earlier, General Assembly is made up of two assembly lines, the skillet line used in trim, and a new assembly line with automated guided vehicles, or AGVs, for chassis. Where the trim line assembles the interior of the truck, the chassis line assembles the skateboard, marries the cab and bed to that skateboard, fills the thermal system, and it is here that the hub motors will first rotate and the endurance will take its first ride. The endurance skateboard is the underpinning of an extremely flexible platform that will be common with any future models. At this next stop, you will meet John Wood, who is our Director of General Assembly. Hello and welcome to Lordstown Motors. My name is John Wood. I am the Director of General Assembly. I have over 20 years of automobile manufacturing experience. And before coming to Lordstown Motors, I worked for General Motors in this facility for around 12 years. My last assignment with General Motors was to help shut down this plant. I'm proud to be part of the team that is here to open it back up again. On my team, I have over 40 team members, team leaders, supervisors, and engineers. Some of the best uh, team members and the best team I've ever worked with. So what is General Assembly and what do we do? General Assembly takes the hard work from stamping, body shop, paint shop, from the motor line and from the battery line and assembles it all together. By the time our job is done, we get to drive the endurance off of the end of the line. General Assembly consists of two main lines. The first one is Trim Shop. In Trim Shop, we build up the cab. We put things like uh, wiring harnesses, electrical components, safety components like seat belts and airbags. We put seats in, carpets in, trim panels, the cockpit or IP, basically everything that the customer touches while riding on the inside of the cab. Uh, our trim line is based off of a skillet system. Skillet system is very important to us because it's extremely important in flexibility of both what we can build on that line. Uh, General Motors previously built a cruise. We were very quickly able to go uh, change some tooling and convert it so we can run a truck cab. And it's also very flexible in the volume that we can produce off of that line. The skillet line is very ergonomically friendly to our team members. Team member actually steps onto the conveyor system and rides along with the cab as it goes down the line. Less steps, less wear on the body. Every individual skillet can go up and down depending on the operation that's being performed in that station. That puts the operator in the best position to have less wear and tear as they're performing the, the required operations on their assigned job. Uh, as the cab is being built on the skillet line, we start our second main line, which is the chassis line. 
The chassis line starts a few hundred yards that direction. It is new to Lordstown Motors. We've purchased and installed since uh, Lordstown Motors has owned this plant. On the chassis line, we start with a battery pack, put the frame on, high voltage cables on, we put the suspension system on, we put the motors on, we put the brake system on, until we have a completed skateboard like you see that just came into the station. AGVs are extremely flexible in both volume and in, um, volume and in, versa in what we can build. Uh, it is also very ergonomically friendly to our employees. The operation that you just watched is our marriage station. It is the most critical operation in all of General Assembly. As you notice from the top of the cab up to the top of the carrier, plenty of space protect for future products, uh, potentially like van or a high top van. We, we can very quickly uh, put in multiple product lines on, in this system. From this station, the AGV will lower and drive forward. The two team members that you saw in the operation are extremely critical to what, what happens here. Uh, we are in full auto right now. The team members verify that there's no quality issues as we assemble. There's no pinched harnesses, no pinched connectors, no damaged pieces. Um, there's two of them so they can watch out for each other and make sure that they're both safe as they're performing those, those tasks. Uh, from this station, the AGV with the cab will drive forward. We'll start to make thermal connections and electrical connections. We'll put the bed on just down that direction. We'll put the frunk in. We'll put the fascia on. We'll put the wheels on. We'll fill all of the fluids. We'll do some testing. We'll do uh, uh, some flashing and configuring of the vehicle. And then we get to drive the endurance off the end of the line. Two main points I want you to take away from uh, my presentation here in General Assembly. First is that every line that we have is set up with extreme flexibility for both volume and the product that we can produce. And second, every operation is set up with the ergonomics and the team member in mind. Thank you very much for joining us in General Assembly. Uh, appreciate your time. Our last stop on the tour is the battery pack assembly area. As John mentioned, the battery's position in the endurance is low and center between the frame rails, giving the endurance a much lower center of gravity than a traditional internal combustion engine truck. Dan Tashemsky, our Director of Battery Manufacturing, will walk you through the manufacturing process. Since this will be your last stop on the tour, I want to thank you for coming to see our facility. I hope you have learned something and you are as excited as we are to start production. Hi everyone, hope you've been enjoying the tour. My name is Dan Tashemsky. I'm the Director of Propulsion Manufacturing for the Battery Line. And uh, I know you've been seeing a lot of cool stuff uh, throughout the factory and throughout this tour, but you're now in the coolest shop in the entire factory, the Battery Line. A little bit about myself, I have 25 years experience in manufacturing and building factories around the world, all over the United States, Europe, Mexico, South America, Canada. Um, I then went on to Tesla. I, at Tesla, I was the engineering manager for paint. I went on to General Assembly, where, we, where I built the Model S, Model X assembly line, onto the new paint shop that they are currently running out of, then plastics mold and plastics paint. Um, from there, I moved on to Boeing. At Boeing, I was in charge of maintenance for the 747. 767s, 777, 777X, and 787 assembly lines. In uh, November of 2019, I got a phone call from Rich Smith, wanted to know if we wanted to do the same crazy stuff that we were doing at Tesla with a startup company. To answer him, I started December 2nd of that year. I started here as a, the director for General Assembly and moved on to the battery line that I'm now in control of today. Uh, this battery line behind me is the module line. This is where we manufacture and assemble our modules for the battery packs, which is the line behind us. Uh, it all starts here with these battery cells. We take these cells and we inspect them, and load them and inspect them in the beginning of the line. We look for dings, dents, scratches, rust, nicks, and uh, are they dimensionally correct and are they fully operational? From there, they get connected to a cooling tube. As you can see, this cooling tube is wavy. That gives us the contour and more surface area 
to cool or temperature control of our battery cell. Once all these are assembled, they create a bandolier. Seven bandoliers come together to form a module. The modules are then laser bonded, which you can see in this video. Then they are come to the end, verified, then off to the pack line. The lower four modules are installed in the pack. Lower, sorry, lower eight are installed in the pack. Then the upper four are. Create a total of 12 modules per pack. And what that boils down to is these cells, there's 6,048 cells per battery pack. Now these lines that are here, this module line here, it can do 10,000 packs a year. The pack line can do 30,000. Now I know that math doesn't add up, so we also have two identical lines that are on the ocean on the way here right now. Those are set to start coming in next month with being commissioned and online in September. So that completes the battery line. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour and thank you for visiting Lordstown Motors. Hi, my name is Willie Porter. I'm senior manager for powertrain controls here at uh, Lordstown Motors. We're inside Beta 43, which is one of the Beta vehicles in our development fleet. Now, beta vehicles aren't normally shown to the public. Um, they're used for attribute development and for feature development, and also for validation purposes. So we try and make sure that the trucks aren't going to break when the customer gets hold of them. So the first thing I'd like to show you is the, um, the performance capabilities of, of the vehicle. The, um, the powertrain, I think you know a little bit about already. Um, Four-wheel four -wheel drive, four electric motors in the wheels, battery pack sitting low down. So the advantages of that is that we can get some pretty good acceleration out of this. The vehicle at the moment is limited in speed. Uh, it's a development vehicle and we don't really want to go too fast over some of this course because it's a bit on the uh, left side. Um, that being said though, the regenerative braking kicks in and slows us down quite nicely, putting some energy back into the battery there. Coming round, we've got uh, a slalom piece here. Now, as you know, the battery's low down. It's located between the chassis rails in the truck. So that gives us the ability, the uh, good low central gravity, which allows us to take the slalom course at a decent speed for the truck. Yeah. Now, of course, the in-wheel motors also give us another advantage. There's no um, drivetrain components going into the center of the vehicle. There's no universal joints or anything like that, which allows us to fit the vehicle with an excellent turning circle. We can uh, see this here. Now, we think that will be very useful for our customers on the job site. Now, the advantage, the other advantage of the in-wheel motors is, of course, that we have control over the torque at each wheel. Truly independent four-wheel drive. Now, that means my engineers that are doing the control system can implement some pretty amazing things in the software which means that we can do this kind of thing like this and make a very stable handling truck as we pull up and over some more rough surfaces. <laughs> and again, we feel the regeneration braking as we're coming down. Now the whole combination of this, we're aiming for a very safe vehicle, we're aiming for a very robust and reliable vehicle. And the final demonstration here is the lane change maneuver. Imagine you're having to miss something that's falling out into the middle of the road, or maybe a small animal or child runs out. There you have it. That's a very quick ride around our test track with Beta 43. Our in-wheel motors, our battery system made here in Lordstown.
Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this virtual recreation of Lordstown Week. We hope you enjoyed the tour of our facility. My name is Ian Upton, and I'd like to welcome you to the Q&A portion of the Live from Lordstown experience. In front of me are all of our presenters that you heard from along our tour route. They are now here to answer any question or the questions that you've submitted. So let's get started. Okay, George, our first question is from Austin from Salem, Ohio, and he would like to know, how many jobs per hour can you build in the body shop, and how many robots are there? Okay, well, we are set up to build 30 jobs an hour currently, and uh, we have 900 robots just in the body shop, uh, not counting what's in the other shops. Very good. Uh, next question looks like it's for you, Dusty, from Colin in Medina, Ohio. He wants to know, how many in a row of the same color can you paint? Hey, Colin, great question. Although we can paint colors back to back, it's most efficient for our process to paint in batches of about 10. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. Very good. Okay, Aaron, it looks like an engineering question. This is from Elena from Round Rock, Texas. She would like to know, with the additional mass from the in-wheel motors and the battery pack, in addition to the limited space at the wheel ends for brake hardware, what are the performance expectations for stopping distance? So our target uh, for braking uh, distance is to be among the leaders. And uh, soon here we'll be taking our beta vehicles and working in conjunction with our brake system integrator in order to start dialing in the performance of the brake system and confirming our final numbers to make sure that we're inside our range. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Okay, it looks like this is a stamping question. So Mr. Fabian, Michael, uh, was all of the equipment left by the pre previous owner in the stamping plant? Uh, yes, the previous owner left all the equipment that we have in the stamping plant. Uh, there are uh, three brand new presses that was put in before with the previous owner that was worth about $24 million. And then if we would were to replace one of our stamping lines, it would be over $30 million. Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, Dan, a uh, battery question from Mike from Alpharetta, Georgia. He would like to know, how long do you expect the battery pack to last? Our battery packs are warranted for eight years, 100,000 miles. And we don't expect any degradation prior to the warranty expiration. Very good, thank you, Dan. Okay, hub motor, so Rajiv. The next question is from Sophie, Sophia, sorry, Sophia, uh, Huntley, Illinois. How confident are you of the hub motor manufacturing readiness for start of production? And then also, what will your capacity be? Yeah, so we are very confident from the, from the manufacturing point of view for the readiness for the start of production. Our lines are already in the ocean, and we are going to get that by July first week. Uh, the lines have already been tested by integrator, so the only thing what we need to do it once it's here, we commission and then do the prove out. Excellent, thank you, Rajiv. Um, General Assembly, John, uh, this next question comes from Nick in Ocala, Florida. He would like to know, what is the total process time for General Assembly? So process time for General Assembly from when we first receive the cab in trim shop to when we can drive the endurance off of the end of the line. With current operating plan, it's around eight hours. Now, our system is flexible enough that we can change some gapping, gapping uh, uh, that we're gonna do on the line. We could change line speed, and, and we can reduce that down to as low as four hours, or we can increase it to over 16 hours, just based off of what, in process, uh, how full we want the system. Uh, but, but to begin with, it is eight hours from start to finish. So very flexible, it sounds like. Very flexible system. Okay, uh, next question is from David, uh, New York, New York. And uh, this looks like it'll be for Aaron. Um, Aaron, will there be any performance compromises due to the additional weight at the wheel ends? And I believe he's looking into the unsprung mass question that's out there. 
Uh, so I, I actually touch on this at the beginning of my presentations when I talk about uh, the advantages of uh, the additional isolation in a body on frame system that helps us counteract that ride harshness. But what, what I didn't get the opportunity to really talk about is um, our beta vehicles have already been tuned to our comfort and performance uh, requirements. And uh, when I talked to the uh, tuning engineer about it, he actually said that uh, the, the tuning was actually very straightforward and ordinary to get it to, to where we want it to be. Um, uh, and the exciting part too is so outside of LMC, we've had so many people riding in those vehicles that, that week. So we'll be able to hear what they say, but I was able to ride in those vehicles on Tuesday. I gotta tell you, I, I thought they were excellent. Excellent, thank you, Aaron. Uh, George, body shop question. Uh, his next question is coming from Donnie, who lives in Park City, Utah. He'd like to know, what are the materials in the body made of? Hey, Donnie, good question. So the structure, uh, everything but the closures, the swing metal, the structure is steel. So the underbody, body sides, cab back roof, all steel. And then the doors, the hood, fenders, tailgate, and box sides are all aluminum. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next question looks like it is for uh, stamping. So uh, Mike, Fabian, our, this is coming from Brandon in Austintown, Ohio. What kind of volume can you get from the presses? Okay, the volume from our presses would be different than what would be in the body shop. We, we run in batches, so our volume is about 400 per hour on our ma major press lines and on our transfer press, we can get 650 an hour. And that's individual parts that are packaged to ship to the body shop. Thank you, Michael. A general assembly question. So John, next question is coming from Hannah from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, because the speedometer is software locked, could a company request that the 80 mile per hour cap be removed? So actually that 80 mile, mile per hour lock, that was a, a kind of a standard set when our market te marketing team talked to some of the fleet managers. Uh, the true story is that the customer or fleet manager can control the governed speed or completely remove the governor uh, 100%. Uh, also, they have the ability to, to check torque and to govern torque so that we could uh, decrease the, uh, the acceleration. Parent with kids, you can really control what they're able to do and make sure they're not uh, having too much fun in your vehicle. Thanks, John. Uh, Rajiv, uh, next question is coming from Hero in, from Cleveland, Ohio. Wants to know that if it will be difficult to replace or service the brakes with the hub motors. Yeah, so changing the brakes are not difficult. But since we are using, the entrance is using first time this hub motor technology, we need to train our people, so that's in process, and which is normal whenever we're using the, the new technology. But with the regenerative braking, the life of the brakes are considerably a lot longer compared to the any IC engine vehicle brake. Thank you, sir. Okay, Dan, a charging question for the battery. This is coming from Isaac, who lives in Highland Park, Illinois. For level two charging, what is the maximum amperage or kilowatt hour capability for the endurance? Uh, for level two charging, maximum amperage is about 45 amps, uh, utilizing an 11 kilowatt charger. Uh, we do have high speed DC charging. That's about 470 amps using a 150 kilowatt charger. Very good, thanks Dan. Okay, Dusty, uh, looks like the next question is a paint one, and this is coming from Nicole in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, what color options will be available for purchase, um, and will there be both the premium and normal colors? So I'm excited you guys are so excited about paint. We have an eight color palette, and as with any palette, uh, the majority of our model mix will be electric white and night shift black. The silvers will be launched in the first quarter or the first half of 2022 and the premium colors uh, will come online in the second half of 2022. All right, thank you, Dusty. 
Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today at uh, this Lordstown Live event. This is going to conclude today's question and answer session. So again, thank you for attending, submitting your questions. We look forward to having your support as we march towards our production in September. Thank you and ride with Lordstown.